Hello again everyone, this is Instructor Victor Campos for CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. We downloaded our software, we set up a folder where we're going to get some work done. Let's practice a little bit with some very basic HTML. I will open Visual Studio Code again. One thing that you may find useful or annoying uh, would be that it remembered the last thing that you did. So if I wanted to get back directly to the last bit of code I was working with, that's pretty useful. But actually, I want to start over, so in my case, it's in my way. And there's several ways we can handle this. I can simply close this current editor, and then I can start a new file. But it remembered I was on lesson 0, and eventually I'm going to be on lesson 1, and 2, and so forth. So then I could go to File close folder. Visual Studio Code is going to look inside of a folder, everything inside of it, so that it helps you work faster. Again, that may be helpful, it may be a hindrance. And for practice, I'm just going to go back to open the L0 folder, lesson 0. I'm still kind of doing a 0 lesson for the moment. I don't want to work with L0 HTML, I want a brand new one. So same thing as before, File New, File Save As, this time we'll do L1.html. And so for our first real bit of code, if you have no experience in HTML, HTML is made up of tags, which are defined by the angle brackets, or the less than and greater than symbol. On your keyboard, it's basically the comma and the period. It's shift comma, shift period. Gives you the left and right angle brackets, less than, greater than. And here in visual code, as I open my left bracket, it's going to then suggest all of the possibilities of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript that we can use at this point. So, the very first thing we need to write is the document type tag. So we type the less than exclamation point d o c t y p e space html right angle bracket or greater than and that completed one tag. Do you see how it highlights, I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard to kind of go through the different uh, characters here, but it highlights doc type, it highlights HTML, and then it highlighted the pair of the angle brackets. This is again a civilized code editor that helps you write your code. This is the first line that we need, and basically it's defining the document type that we're going to work with is HTML. Actually, HTML5, which is the latest version of the standard. This is our first line that we will always have in all of our documents. At the end of the line, I'll press Enter. And next, I'll start writing the HTML tag. So, left angle bracket, HTML. It's suggesting to me, as I'm typing, let me back up a little bit, as I'm typing, I typed H, and it says, do you mean the H1 tag, the H2 tag, the head tag, the header tag, the HTML tag, etc., etc. It's going to suggest to me possible tags at this point. And as we get more advanced, this is going to be a great time saver. I'm usually going to spell them all out, especially for a beginner. So I want the HTML tag, and closing that with the right angle bracket. Pretty much every single HTML tag needs a pair, a pair of tags, the opening tag, the closing tag. HTML, on the technical level, stands for Hypertext Markup Language. ML means we're marking. It's a markup language. We're marking various aspects of our document. And so I'll press Enter a couple of times, and then I'll do angle bracket slash HTML angle bracket. What that did was it closed my 
HTML tags. You see, if I click on one of the tags, its pair highlights. If I click on between there, line 3, nothing highlights. If I click on line 2, line 4 highlights. They're related to each other. They're a pair. So using line numbers is an intelligent way to deal with your code. When I reference, let's go to line 7. Well, we know what line it'll be instead of trying to say go to that line where that one tag is above the other one. So line numbers. Now, at the moment, this indented itself, and indentions are often very useful. In this case, though, I want to backspace that just so that it's on the same line, both HTML tags. So what we're saying here is we've got a document of type HTML, and we're starting our HTML tag, so everything between these two tags will be a web page. I've done a lot of hard work so far, so I'm going to save it. File Save. In between my two HTML tags, just for readability, I'll press Tab so that it indents, and I'm going to start writing my head tag, my head tag, which has a pair, which means that I'm going to close the head tag, and that means you should see it's slash head. Head tag started, head tag ended. HTML tag started, HTML tag ended with a slash. It has to be in this format, which is the slash and then the rest of the tag. I gave myself a little bit of space between the head tags because I'm going to write something in that block. Next line, line 6, I will write the body tag. It's pair, head, and body. Just about every tag will have a pair. Notice, though, the doc type does not. I'll make a note and point out the ones that don't have a pair as we get to them. Here's one coming up, actually. I'm going to back up into the head block. I'm going to tab that in here and then start writing. Now, what I recommend is to open and close the angle brackets just so that you don't forget to close the angle bracket. And then I'll write meta, M-E-T-A. This is the meta tag. This one does not have a pair. But it has what are known as attributes, which is more code that explains what this tag does. So in between the A and the angle bracket, I'll add a space. So I'm inside the meta tag, and I'll write C-H-A-R. Again, visual code is going to help you by suggesting code that will appear here. And as we get more advanced, it will be very helpful for, it, for us to use the hints. We can press Enter. It'll finish writing it for us. But again, at this point, it's doing too much. We want to learn before we take shortcuts. So I'm going to ignore some of these at the beginning. So once again, C-H-A-R-S-E-T. This is car set. Some people say it char set, and those people are wrong. But anyway, car set. This means character set. What, for, what sort of characters can we use? What alphabets and letters and such can we use in our document? This is the car set attribute of the meta tag. And an attribute is defined by then having an equals symbol and then quotes. Now, we can do a couple of kinds of quotes here, and both are correct, and we will see why we would need both later on. On your keyboard, right next to the Enter, you'll probably see the single quote, and we will need two of them. Did you see for a moment, everything after that single quote changed color? It was expecting the ending quote. There I ended it. So now that's orange. Those are the single quotes. I'm going to back up because we also have the double quotes. If you hold shift and press the same key, you get the double quote. Notice how everything changed color. And then I'll 
add the second double quote and it ends there so either one of those single quote double quote will work just fine I'm gonna go usually with double quotes there's no right or wrong answer here it's basically what you learned first um, and it'll work just fine so I'm gonna do the open quote end quote and in between those quotes I'll back up here get used to using the arrow keys on your keyboard no offense but I get super frustrated when I see students reaching over for their mouse and then going off to click that spot right there and then click on that spot right there and that spot get used to using the arrow keys on your keyboard because to move your hands off of the keyboard to go get that mouse is gonna waste your time whereas if your hands are already by the keyboard you're gonna be able to move through your code very very quickly like this with the arrow keys than that clunky old mouse so it's up to you of course but I highly recommend use the arrow keys so I'm between the quotes and I'll write UTF-8 basically we're defining our character set all the letters we can use we can use English letters Spanish letters Russian letters German letters Hebrew letters all the alphabets of the world basically so our our uh, our website could be multilingual at the end of that line I'll press enter I've got a new line 5 and next I will write the title tag and because most tags are going to have a pair I'm going to write the pair start of title end of title which means of course the slash most of these tags that I've been writing have been on separate lines head starts on line 3 ends on line 6 body starts on 7 ends on 9 etc title here I started it on 5 and I ended it on 5 it doesn't matter if I break it into multiple lines if I keep it on a single line the web browser won't care you can do it a couple of ways so anyway title I will write here my first website I want to see all my hard work so I need to save it I then need to navigate over to my folder where I've been saving my work I see lesson 1 L1 I've set the browser to Chrome so I'll double click it it opens in Google Chrome and there's all my hard work wait a minute it's blank no look at the tab my first website so what I wrote in visual code here in the title tag displays in the tab of the web browser if I were to open it in any other browser you should see the same result here I am, I am in Internet Explorer up on the tab my first website so what I've written inside this head block does not appear does not appear in the main area of the web browser this main area here is the viewport what I've written doesn't appear in the viewport so inside the body block line 8 I will write something here you might have seen this before hello world this is traditional for programmers to write the hello world phrase as one of the first uh, little programs that they create so we'll carry on the tradition hello world I want to save my work go back to the browser and reload it or refresh it and now I see hello world in the viewport my first website is still in the head block I use HTML tags to mark and give meaning to the to the various sections of my web page and I didn't really add any specific markup any HTML to hello world so it looks like this plain but if I wanted to make it look a little different and give it a different meaning I'm gonna go back and before hello world at the start of the line I'm gonna add the tag h1 that's a number one close the tag 
close the angle bracket, then close the tag at the end, slash h1. I will save my work. Back to the web browser. Refresh. And look at that. Hello World became big and bold. Yes, but it's also now gained more importance. The h1 tag gave a meaning to our text here to become a heading one big and bold and important looking but also ranked number one of importance knowing that if I go back to my code and add h2 and in this case I know that I'm going to use the h2 tag so I'll write them both and then between the tags write something else hello world I am a coder I will save that. I'm using the keyboard shortcut Control S. Again, memorize keyboard shortcuts. They are listed to the side of the command. This will save your workflow. Switch to the browser. Reload. So now I have heading 2, second most important text, second most important content on the website. It's also visually smaller. Next line. This time I will add a P tag. I'll break this into multiple lines. I'm going to write, I'm using Visual Studio Code, period, enter. I am also working with Google Chrome. I am learning a lot. P is for paragraph. We'll see what that looks like once I save it and refresh it in my browser. I'm using Visual Studio Code. I'm also, oh, look at that. It didn't go into multiple lines, even though I wrote multiple lines in my code. Now, I'm also going to hide my Explorer for the moment to the left just so that I can see my code like this. But anyway, uh, notice that these lines of code did not break. HTML does not automatically break lines unless you tell it. So we will see over and over and over. The code will not behave how you think unless you are specific. So I wanted to break these lines. I'm going to go to the end of line 11 and write the BR tag. This is break. Then I'll go to the end of 12 and add the br tag break the break tag does not have a pair you just simply write it like that the opening tag and that's it so if I add those break tags and go back to my browser reload it now they're broken into multiple lines and so we have several things that we can learn in HTML but this is a, a good intro for the moment the basic structure of a page, talking about tags and how they have pairs most of the time, and that we need to write our code and save the code and then run the code to see the result.